servicing old diesel Land Rover injectors. I often wondered how diesel engine injectors work. I have four old Series 3 Land Rover injectors that were bought via eBay. Then I bought a test pump and in this video I show the component parts of an injector followed by rebuilding one and then testing it using the test pump. Here are the four injectors and there are also four glow plugs in this box. They were very cheap and I bought them to play around with. This is a clip from the last episode and here is a close up shot of one of the injectors currently still in the engine of my Land Rover. This is the pump that I bought. Warning, using this high pressure pump in a confined space can be a very dangerous thing to do. How do I know that? And needless to say, do not put your hands anywhere near the injector nozzle during the test. The first part of the job is to mount the pump onto the bench. I'm going to drill some holes in the bench and use four bolts to hold it in place. The bolts that you can see were in my box of bolts and I don't know where they came from. I think there was something to do with a piece of furniture I once disassembled. Using a ruler, the pump is six inches in from each side and I'm using a deep hole marker through the deep holes to mark four rings on the bench. The next part is very obvious. I'm using my DeWalt drill to drill four eight millimeter holes through the bench. And in case you're wondering if I got the holes in the right place, I'm pleased to say yes I did. There was no other work done other than drilling the holes, brushing away all the sawdust, and then the rest is obvious. I used four bolts, four washers and four nuts to hold the pump to the bench. I went to a local petrol station and bought some diesel and here I'm pouring it into the container. This diesel is called V-Power and I use this in my car which has a 3 litre V6 twin turbo diesel and I must admit using this stuff I get excellent mileage to the gallon. And the diesel particulate filter or DPF never gets clogged up. Anyway back to the job it's time to read the instructions. The pump is bolted to the bench and ready to go. I fitted the union connector pipe and it's all looking good. Or at least it was until I fitted the injector and it did this. The diesel just dripped out of the end of the union so this is no good and why is this happening? This is a very old injector and I think the cone angle is different. Supplied with the pump were two o-rings and I didn't know what these were for. Maybe this is where they go. I refitted the injector and tightened the union but it made no difference, it was leaking just as badly with the o-ring as it did without. It looks like it's leaking from where the union cone meets the piece of pipe, but it isn't. I reprofiled the union cone to fit my injectors by turning the end of the union in the lathe. It was a very simple job and then... I'm moving the pump handle and it's not leaking and the pressure is rising on the pressure gauge. And the good news is the injector is blowing off just about where it should be blowing off but it's not opening and closing cleanly and it's dribbling a bit. Time I think to dismantle it. First of all though I'll give it all a good clean. To clean the parts I'm not going to use anything too aggressive. This rotary scouring pad should do the trick as it removes the dirt and not the metal. I'd like to mention at this stage I would not do it this way if I was doing it for real. I would fit new nozzles, and the new nozzles really make a new injector. And now comes the difficult part, getting the end off the injector, the part that holds the nozzle. I found a spanner that was a really good tight fit on the part that secures the nozzle to the injector body. I held it in my big vise as you can see using brass inserts to stop it marking the cast iron body and it really was quite difficult to remove. Then I tried the other three injectors and I can't move those, I think I'm going to have to heat them up. I turned the injector round to remove the top cap, being very careful not to lose the copper washer around the bottom. These injectors are really simple but really clever at the same time, pretty much like a steam engine. This centre threaded part applies pressure to the spring so you can get the correct setting 
and you move this by using an allen key as shown here. And that's all there is to it at this end. There's a spring and a centre push rod down the middle and the part I've just removed. Here are the bits on the bench. You can just see the end of the push rod inside the main body. I'm only really interested in the nozzle at the end. This is a very precisely machined part. So what's wrong with the nozzle? Well, not much really. When I pulled out the part that's normally moved by the pressure, it just had a bit of a notchy feel in a certain area. I thought it would be a good idea to just lap the part in position, and for this I'm using some T-cut, and not a lot of T-cut. After this I used the scouring tool to clean up the centre push rod, which was a little bit rusty. And in no time at all it looked like this, perfectly serviceable. Anywhere where I detected a slight hint of rust or any dirt, I used a scouring tool to remove it, then I refitted the nozzle. After cleaning up the body of the injector, it's time to adjust it. It's in position on the test pump. I'm fitting the threaded part, being very careful not to over tighten it. It doesn't need to be very tight, just enough to apply sufficient pressure to the spring so that the injector opens at a set value. And that value is just under £2,000 per square inch. The injector is supposed to open and snap shut without dribbling, and it seems to be OK. Here it is doing, I suppose, what it's supposed to do. It injects and then snaps shut until the next time you pump it up to nearly 2,000 psi. At the beginning I showed this warning, and if you watch this image that I ran forwards and backwards so you could see it, look how much atomised diesel is in the atmosphere in my workshop. It's a warm day and I was sweating heavily because I was hammering away trying to get the nozzle cap off, and some of this perspiration actually went in my eyes, complete with its mixture of atomised diesel. This required immediate attention. I cleaned my eyes thoroughly with a clean cloth, then I used an eye bath followed by eye drops. Thankfully, everything was okay this morning. Last night I washed my hair, changed all my clothes, and washed my hands about half a dozen times, but I can still get a faint smell of diesel on my hands. I'm going to think again about using this stuff. Playing with steam engines using superheat and steam oil can be a problem because the steam oil emulsifies in the exhaust. But thankfully it doesn't smell as bad as diesel. That's it for this short episode about injectors. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.